Welcome to your opportunity of making Minecraft look the best it possibly can. My name is Stobbles and today I'm going to teach you how to transform the BSL shader pack into something vibrant, clean and vanilla friendly. I'm going to assume that if you've come this far you already know how to install shader packs, but don't worry if not, there's plenty of useful guides detailing the process here on YouTube. However, for reference sake, I'm using a combination of the fabric mod Sodium and Iris, but you can also use Optifine if that's your preference. Now anybody who's experienced BSL shaders right out of the box knows it has a very hazy and washed out feel to it. My goal today is to tidy this up, increase the visibility and make the colours pop while staying true to the Minecraft vanilla feeling. And I'll be adding in a short montage at the end to showcase what these shaders look like while playing. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into the configuration. So to start off with, we're going to go into the lighting tab and here I've set the shadow map quality to high and the shadow distance to 512. Now bear in mind, this is going to hit your performance quite hard. So depending on how powerful your machine is, you may want to adjust these accordingly. Then down the bottom here, I like to make sure ambient occlusion is turned on with a strength of 1.5 and I also like to include desaturation with a desaturation factor of very low. So coming out of that one we can go down to atmospherics. I like to make sure that the clouds are set to vanilla with the sky desaturation on. I also like to include the aurora and turn the distance fade off. Per biome weather, I also set to off so that we can get the aurora in the night sky in any biome. I also turn the light shafts off and the fog density down to zero. And that's what creates the super crisp look. Light shaft strength, I put down to 0.25 as even when this is off, you get sun glare, which is affected by this here. So I turn that down and just keep weather up here to your default. And then coming up to the sky configuration, tab I set day exposure to minus 0.5 and the skybox brightness all the way down to 0.25 coming out of there we can then go into the camera tab this is why I turn everything off apart from the underwater distortion. Now, if you do want to go for the vanilla look, you may want to turn the vignette on, which will darken the corners. That usually is selected by default, even without shaders on Minecraft. So that's personal preference, but I tend to keep it off. And then coming out of that screen, we can then go into color. Then from here, I like to go to light in color. Then go down to daytime light and turn the intensity down to one. Oh, future stubbles here. I forgot to include the sky color during the original recording, so I'll explain that one for you now. So for the sky color, I like to put the red slider at 72, the green slider at 128, leave the blue on maximum there and set the intensity to 1.05. Okay, moving on. Then I like to go into minimum light and turn down the intensity to 0.6. We can skip over extras. I just like to leave everything default in that section, which brings us on to material. So in the material section, I just like to remove the emissive setting. That way I just find blocks are a bit more balanced in terms of brightness. Then if we go into specular and reflections, I just like to disable the translucent reflections. Sometimes I find that if the sun's reflecting off glass, it becomes way too bright. So I just like to turn that off. And back to the main menu, if we go into water settings, I like to make sure that the water texture mode is set to flat vanilla with the water alpha mode on vanilla. I like to have the details of 40% with the sharpness on high, the bumpiness on 0.75 with a speed of 0.5, water fog density of one and pixel lock disabled. Then coming back out to the main menu, we can go to anti-aliasing in which I just like to make sure that both options are turned on here. Again, this can sometimes hit your performance quite hard. So depending on your PC, you may just want to toggle this on or off. Then coming out again, we're going to go down to color grading and tone map. And as is the case with most shader packs, I feel like this is where you can make the biggest differences. So first of all, we want to go ahead and turn classic exposure on. And this will just make sure that indoors and caves are going to be a little bit brighter. We then leave the tone map lower curve on default one. Slightly increase the tone map upper curve to 1.1 and the tone map white curve to three. And then saturation, I like to bump up to 1.15 and vibrance up to 1.45. If you feel like those colors are a little bit too extreme, you can always bump these down a little bit. Then coming back out to animations, this is all personal preference, but I do like to turn the animation speed down to 0.25 and just disable plants, leaves, and vines while leaving everything else on. And there you have it. Those are my settings to make BSL shaders look as clean and vibrant as possible without going too over the top. Let me know if there's any settings that you change in the comments. And if you'd rather your shaders look like this, then check out my video on complimentary shaders and I'll see you in the next one. That's all from me. Enjoy the BSL showcase.